Hello everyone, welcome to Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel needs. Do you want to calculate the cost of goods sold based on FIFO or LIFO? If you do, please stick around because in this video, I will share with you how to do it very easily using Excel. With some nice functions and some tricks, you can do it all your, on your own. Also, what's nice is there's, there's no VBA coding required here at all. It's a bit complicated, but no VBA, which is always a good thing. So in the file that I'm sharing, there are three sheets. There's the sales sheet where you input the items sold. There's the purchases sheet where you input whatever you purchased them, whenever you purchased them and the cost. And the balance sheet is basically where everything operates and that's where the magic happens. Now you'll notice that I can use more than one product here, which is actually, the, let's say, the, the biggest advantage of this file. You don't have to do it one item by one item. You can just pull all of your information, all of your products, and it will give you the accurate results. So let's start with the easy part. The sales sheet or table, actually, you have the blue columns, which is the information you need to input, and the orange columns, which is the information that is calculated. The order number, it's simply um, the row number minus one because I want to have a unique number for the orders and I want them to um, be different by one. <coughs> That's important for the, um, for the calculation. You have the date of the order, the product, and the quantity. Then you get the value based on whether you're using FIFO or LIFO option and the price per unit, which is the value uh, divided by the quantity. Of course, that the value is based on whatever you have here in the purchases. So all you need to fill in is these three and the other three will be calculated. In the purchases, you have the batch number, which it's not that important, but it is important that it is a, a unique value. So if you don't want to use a batch number and I wrote it here, you can just replace with the row number function, just like I have over here. All that matters is that this column is a key and it's unique. You have the date, which product, what quantity was purchased, and what was the price per unit. That's all you need to fill out. And then the balance sheet, which we'll get to that in a second, basically will show you, uh, will calculate everything. So let's assume I want to add another uh, say, uh, another sale, let's say for the 15th, and I'll take this product and I sold, let's say 100 units. And it's gonna calculate and then it gives me a number. Okay, so, um, how does this work? This is where it works. So it starts off with this column, the order number. So as I mentioned, it's important that the order number is a number between one and whatever you have, and that they change by one, because that's how I'm pulling it. You see, I'm using uh, an if, a simple if. Um, this whole max greater than this number is just to improve the visuality of the table so that there's blank lines instead of numbers that don't mean anything. So it just, as soon as uh, the remaining order, which is this number is zero, I'm moving up in order. So basically for each order, I want to match the batches, okay? And just reduce the number for each batch until I finish the order. So in this case, I have uh, uh, an order for 350 and for A1 you can see I have I have two two uh, two batches one batch is for 200 and one batch is for 600 so if it's a, an order of 350 it's going to take 200 from this batch and 150 from this batch that's my expectation okay and what happens is that this number and I'm pulling the date, product, and quantity, it's just an index match, okay, from 
the sales uh, um, table. And you'll notice that there's also a sum if here, which is going to take whatever was sold from the previous batches for this order. Okay? The remaining is just whatever's remaining from whatever was sold. Okay? And basically, you see that every time you sell something from a batch, this order is uh, reduced, the quantity, until it's eventually zeroed out and we skip over to the next order. The next part, which is a bit more tricky, is how to find the right batch to match this product. So basically, I'm using a few uh, helper columns to do that. So this pretty complicated formula, which I actually actually found online some, some time ago, is going to give me the, the uh, N event, all right? matching this product okay so basically i'm looking for in this column when does a1 appear so i want to go one by one based on the n event that i'm finding and the helper column is the end event so i know that if i am here i always want to be on start with number one because that's the first batch but then i know that if this batch is, is depleted, you see it's zero, I want to switch to a new batch, number two. But if the item is different, I want to go back to number one. Okay? So, um, that's how this works, and eventually you get an index, you match that index for the batch number. All right, and then again, I pull the batch number and the price based on this table. And again, I have a sum if because I want to remove whatever was sold um, to the previous lines. So I have the quantity, the price, the sold is what was sold, the minimum, it's the minimum between what, what what's remaining in the order and what's remaining in the batch. So here it's 200 because the batch only holds 200. Here it's 150 because the remaining order is 150. This gives me the remaining quantity in the batch, which I need. And the value of the, this line is just the price times the batch. And basically you see that it goes from order number one until it completes it to order number two. It starts with the first batch, there's no quantity. So it goes to the second batch and it takes the 450 that was remaining here for this order and then completes it with uh, the uh, third batch and the fourth batch is one that will, will finish everything. And you can see that I can jump to a different product in between and there's not, no issue. So um, I can even um, show you what happens if I add something that doesn't have purchased item. So let's add another uh, sorry this is not the right date. Hold on. Okay, so let's add Z Z5. If I want to purchase five purchase I sold five hundred. Because I don't have anything in the purchases for this one, then it's going to show me zero and zero. If I go to the balance, it's just going to give me this kind of line because I don't have anything to sell for. I'll go back to the purchases and I'm going to add, just to show you how this works, uh, another line for, what did we call this, ZZ5. ZZ5, I'm going to give it just a name of a batch, and let's say 350 at $7. So if I put here 500, so I have the full amount, then you would see that this would get a price per unit of 7, and exactly what I expected. Now I'll put 250 like so, and Z88, ZZ5, another 
1450 at 9, so I'm expecting now to see the value at 8. Let's let it calculate for a second, and you get it at 8. So this is how it works. I've, um, I've dragged the formulas up to line 30. All, all of these have some if errors and showing you blanks. But assuming you have more lines, you just need to take the last line and just drag it however you need, and it will continue to work. Um, if you enjoyed the video, enjoyed the contact, content, please subscribe, share with your friends, like, leave a comment, and see you on the next video. Take care.